Thank you very much, Miss. I would actually really encourage this conversation to be a group conversation because I know obviously you guys are now finished all your exam. Everyone finished your exams? Put your hand up. Yeah, send it up. That's a bit more like it. it sounds, you're all excited? All right, good, good, good. Um, before I get into the bulk of what I'd like to share with you today, um, as Miss said, I was a student here 10 years ago at Cairns High. And I graduated in 2009. Um, welcome to all you students. And I feel really privileged, actually, with the opportunity to, to come and, ha and speak with you. Not just to speak to you, but to speak with you, to have a conversation. Um, but before, again, I get into the bulk of it, I would just like to make a couple of small acknowledgements. One, to the original indigenous people of this land, the traditional owners. Um, I'd really like to pay my respects and acknowledge them. And I'd also like to acknowledge all of my past teachers who have helped shape me into the person that I am today and I wouldn't be here without them. So there are two small acknowledgements and the last one is my family. I really am uh, grateful how privileged I am with the family that I've had to support me through my life. So I'd just also like to acknowledge them. And the last little acknowledgement that I have to, to just bring to all of our awareness is you guys, because you guys, I was there 10 years ago. I was done with my exams. I was in the last couple of weeks of my schooling. And I had a lot of things running through my mind back then. You know, I was really excited because finally I had all the pressure of the exams and all of the expectations of performing and doing well in my studies and playing in my sports. And, and suddenly it felt like there was a little bit of relief. But there was also this anxiety within me, this kind of like uncertainty around what's, what's coming around the next corner, what my life is gonna look like, what I'm gonna study at university, where I'm gonna go with my job, who is gonna be my friends and when they're all gonna leave me. And so um, I was constantly like playing with this, this conflict inside and also this like kind of openness to receive and allow things to flow as as they should and just ready for the next kind of big adventure. And so I guess I can just acknowledge that maybe there might be some things that are going on for you. And I just wanted to come up onto this stage because I remember being uh, in high school and my friends used to play in bands up here and I was always up down there and I just wanted to come up to, to be up here for, for one last time. And um, symbolically, I'm gonna actually come down the stairs and I'm not gonna stand up here any longer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just walk down <laughs> and I'm gonna join you guys because I am not a teacher and you guys are almost no longer students. Um, I am not here to tell you how to be or tell you what to do. I truly believe that decision is up to you. Um, and that's a big part of leaving school. It's a big part of becoming 18, a huge part of becoming an adult, taking responsibility. And that's part of the message that I'd like to share with you today. However, I'm not going to be a teacher like those guys over there. I'm a young adult, just like you guys. I'm only 26 years old. Again, I graduated 10 years ago from Kansai. And I still have much of my life to live. I have some life experiences and stories that have shaped me into the person that I am now that I freely want to offer to you guys as an opportunity for maybe you guys to learn from some of the mistakes and lessons that I've made in my life, but also to empower you guys to really embody this idea that you are the one responsible for your life. Yes, we can have teachers, mentors, mothers, fathers, and friends who help shape us into the person that we are and that who we will become. But ultimately, it is up to you to choose your actions and how you will be in the world, what kind of life you would like to create for yourself. 
And so before I get into the bulk of all of that, I would, I would really love to see, are you guys, who's 18? Put your hand up nice and high, give us a shout, say, yeah, 18. Yeah, all right. You know, one of the teachers said to me prior to this, um, this whole gathering, this, this little talk or whatever, they're like, oh, these guys, are, you know, they're a little bit relaxed and quiet, but I am really committed and driven to, to change narratives, to change the stories of culture, of our own inner stories, and create new stories, create new stories for ourselves, for our communities, for our year levels. And we can, you can, I can, we can all can choose the stories that we want to create for the future. And it's really funny, like, I was having this conversation the other day with my friend and I'm sitting there telling them, I'm like, yeah, I'm really excited, you know, I'm going to Cairns High, I get to chat with the year 12 students, I haven't been back there in 10 years and this is going to be great, like I get to share a message about a little bit of what I've done in my, in my life and the things I'm doing now and all of these really exciting things and they're like, what are you going to say? <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure yet, what would you say? What would you and that was the question that came up for me. And it's a question I propose to you right now. And obviously you're, you're still going, you're still in it, you're still in school, you're still in grade 12. But just for a moment, have a small reflection. Who went to primary school here? Raise your hands, give us a, oh yeah. Who went to school locally in Cairns? We've all probably come from some primary school, whether it's internationally, we have a few international students here I'm sure whether it's locally, whether it's interstate. And just for a moment, close down your eyes, have a thought to yourself. What would you say to yourself in primary school? Before you stepped into your shoes as a high school student at Cairns State High School, what would you tell yourself as an opportunity to offer yourself a little bit of wisdom, maybe a small message to encourage you on your journey as you become a high school student? And like at this stage, I, I totally acknowledge that probably most of you have never even thought of this question or this idea of talking to yourself or your past self. So there might not be anything that comes up for you right now. And I have spent some time thinking about what I would say to myself 10 years prior sitting in the same seat as you as I was ready to graduate and leave high school. And there was this part of me that was kind of like, yeah, you know what, I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, I was a great guy and I got, you know, had a great life so far. But there's also been times in my life that hasn't been full of rainbows and butterflies and flowers. There has been uh, moments of struggle and hardship and challenges. And I will kind of share some stories to, to elaborate on that and where they came in. However, what I would like to share with you is that it's important, again, to hold yourselves accountable and also your friends accountable. To take responsibility for your actions and your life and the path that you choose to take moving forward. And so just to give you a little bit more background on who I am, and a part of my life journey. The short story, I won't bore you with my whole life story, but I was 17 when I was graduating and sitting in your shoes, ready to go to the formal and super excited by going to schoolies. Anyone going to schoolies out there? Locally, a couple of people, a few, yep, cool, ready for a celebration, essentially. And that's what I see this time as for you. When I reflect back to my high school years, this is a moment, a moment in your life, a significant event, a marking point, almost like an initiation, where you are stepping through a doorway into a whole new world. You are suddenly maybe saying goodbye to friends, thank you to teachers, and ready to embark on whether you know what it looks like yet or not, Ready to embark on a new adventure. Maybe you're going traveling over to Europe. Maybe you're going to university. 
Maybe you've found a job you just love and you're ready to sink your teeth into it. But this point in life is a celebration. So at this point, I would love if you wanted to turn to the person next to you, give them a huge high five and say, well done. You made it. Okay, well done guys. Um, just coming back to the front of the room, I heard one comment here, only just made it. And uh, that is a huge achievement, whether it's through the skin of your teeth or it was graceful and easy, you have all made it and you are about to graduate. Do not let it slip this close to the line, okay? You still have responsibilities to be a student to the next couple of weeks and the teachers are guiding you on the right path, so I would encourage you to still stay disciplined in yourself. But also, not just listen to the teachers and the external resources that you have in abundance to you. Begin to listen to yourself. And at this stage in your life, you might not have cultivated all of the practices necessary to truly listen to what your heart's calling for. Maybe you have. But it's one thing to know what your intuition is saying to you. It's another thing to take action on that and step forward into your life's calling, into your purpose. And maybe some of these ideas you haven't quite thought about or been taught, and that's okay. These are also at the very beginning stages of your life, as am I. If we are to live to 100 years old, I've lived a quarter. Maybe you guys just a little bit less. And so, with this great, beautiful, big life that we have ahead of us, 75, 80 plus years maybe, what do, we, what do you want to do with it? And I had never considered setting goals for myself when I was 17, graduating from high school. I had never considered what my life would be like 10 years down the line and be back at the same school that I graduated with an opportunity to chat with students. I never considered that I would travel across the world following my passion playing football, going to the United States and trying to excel as a professional footballer and playing soccer. I had never even thought about where my life might be in 50 years' time the family that I want to create, the place I want to live. And so these are all just ideas that I would like to offer for you guys to explore. To explore maybe what you would like to create for yourself in five years' time, ten years' time, maybe for a lifetime. And so just to reel it back in and share a small snippet of story with you. I was 17 years old and I decided that it was within my best interest to say goodbye to all of my friends, all of my family, the community that I know, the sports team and players that I played with for a long time and embark on one of the most incredible adventures of my life to date. And that was when I was offered a scholarship to go to the United States and play college soccer. This was perfect, it was my dream come true. And I, I, I felt like at that age I had a pretty good idea of what, of what I was leaving behind and I was just so excited and thrilled by this new opportunity that I get to follow my passion, stay within a comfortable realm of a country that speaks the same language. I had a small understanding of what their culture was like watching many American movies and seeing much TV. And so here I am, 17-year-old boy, arrive in the United States and within the first two months completely culture shocked. And I feel like I have an incredible capacity to, to learn very fast. And so I made it my mission to make new friends and, and go out there and excel in sports and, and find mentors and teachers that can guide me on my journey. And I achieved much of that. But over time, as time went on, 
and I was away from family, I had much, much to learn, so much more to see, and particularly learn about myself. I realized how little I knew about myself. I began to realize how much I had been told about myself from other people, about what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be with, where I should put my precious time and energy. And so I'm living in the United States, fast forward a couple of years, it's about the third year down the line and I've really embodied this idea that I am now free, somewhat. Free from my teacher telling me that I have to go to school and do all of my homework. I'm free from my mum and dad saying, oh, you have to tidy up yourself and clean your room and do your dishes and laundry. Suddenly this is all my responsibility, all of these things that for the majority of my life, I didn't even have to think about. And so that also meant I could stay up as late as I want. I could go to as many parties as I wanted. I could also, if I chose, take as many drugs or drink as much alcohol as I choose. Wow. This was liberating. And, and so I did all of that. I did all of that and it led me to, it's, it's hilarious, it led me to go to one of the biggest parties in the world. I went to spring break, it's down in Panama City Beach, Florida, about 20,000 students from university, one of the biggest parties in the world. On the beach, everyone drunk, crazy, going wild, much of what schoolies is like but on a much smaller scale. School, sorry, schoolies would be the smaller scale of this, this party. <laughs> Larger scale for the spring break, I, I'm telling you now. Because I also went on my own journey to schoolies down on the Gold Coast after graduating, had a great time with my friends, but also started to see some of these patterns in my life repeating themselves where I hadn't learnt the lesson the first time round. And so, the lesson hit me once again. And I didn't learn it. And then, the lesson reappeared in a different form, but on a larger scale, like this party. And it was during that period in my life where all things seemed shiny, rosy, great. I was in amongst all the parties. I was getting all of the girls. I was on TV, this camera crew following me around, this whole spring break journey, where this, this film later comes out on Netflix in 2014, and suddenly it's like, wow, this is awesome, and I'm, I'm barely even conscious. Mindless, numbing, all of the deeper unresolved emotional issues going on within me that I had to cover up through taking drugs, through drinking alcohol, through conquering as many partners as I could. And it's really, it's, it's really quite hilarious. And I'm at the stage in my life where I can look back at it and laugh with you. But there came a moment in my life which was like a marking point. Like this point you have now. It really stuck with me. And it was after going through a series of injuries, again, the patterns repeating and repeating and repeating, where I found myself bedridden. Literally couldn't move. I had just undergone my third knee operation, a total reconstruction of my legs, the third one. I couldn't walk. My doctor was suddenly telling me that you will never play sports again. You'll be lucky to walk. And my dreams at that time shattered. The one thing I truly loved, the sport of football, taken away from me. And so I found myself laying there, and I remember it vividly, I was laying there completely alone, by myself, tears like a waterfall running down my eyes, not knowing what to do with my life, what to do with myself. 
I had been chasing all of this external instant gratifying feelings that were really short-lived in the moment I had nothing projected into the future vision of who I wanted to become I had no real direction or life purpose and I'm sitting there looking around me for someone or something to put all of my blame onto but then realizing I chose this life I chose all of these events and to take all of those drugs and to have these feelings of deep deep depression and it was at that point I was nearly ready to say goodbye to everything But it was also at that point in my life where I realized it's up to me to decide the path that I want to create for myself. And, and that moment in my life really became a marking point to make me reflect, look back upon and decide to walk down this path of hedonistic drug taking, vortexing dark hole or to take a 180 degree turn and walk this line that I felt within my own heart once I began to listen was right for me. And it wasn't an easy choice because as I turned and decided to, to take this walk metaphorically, it was almost as if this river of people and friends and everything else was going against me. They were, they were headed that way. And that also meant that I had to say goodbye to some friends. It meant I had to step out of the environment that I, I knew and really begin to process my own personal journey and why I was having these emotional triggers to things that were arising in my life. Um, and so why do I find it necessary to share this story with you? I guess it comes back to the message that I wanted to share with you from the beginning. And it ultimately comes down to this idea of taking radical self-responsibility. Because as I was laying there in my bed, I, I could just easily say, you know, oh, the guy at the beach gave me those, those drugs and, you know, like it was, I was influenced by my friends to go and go to those parties and drink that alcohol and like, you know, it was great to do all of that. It was so much fun, but here I am, completely broken in my own heart and no one to turn this around but myself. And it's an extremely daunting task and I, I don't think maybe I shouldn't be so lightly on this topic because it's a huge prevalent issue not within Australia but globally and as part of my purpose in being here today is to talk about these issues around the globe which have to do with this idea of disconnection and when I look around the world today and I've had the incredible opportunity to offer talks similar to this to university students across some of the biggest universities in, in England, like Cambridge and Oxford. I had the wonderful opportunity of traveling across the United States and speaking at the likes of UCLA and Mary Washington and all of these incredible opportunities that took me to wonderful places and speak to, speak to students and young adults and people and even grown men, a gang of bikies last weekend. And here I am talking about essentially the current state of the world around mental illness. And it's, it's come into my awareness that uh, the crazy statistics last year from Lifeline is that one in five Adults, not even young adults, adults from 14 years to 44 years are going to take their lives. And if you look around you in this room, there's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. One. 
It's like, whoa, this is blown out of proportion in a second. Hang on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's bring it back. To this idea that I am responsible for my life. And, it's, you know, it's, it's challenging because I was sitting in a seat just like you today. And recently, one of my friends within the last year decided to take his own life. And then a few months later, another friend. And I'm sitting there and I'm, 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 why is it? I'm so confused. Why is it that so many of my friends who I knew, played sports with, who I went to school with, why is it that so many of them are willing to take their own lives? And I th pondered on that question for so long. It's, it gives me shivers right now. Confused. I was, and still am at some, some level confused inside because there was a moment in my life where I was at the pit darkest moment ready to take off into that spinning vortex of darkness. And realizing that there are probably many people in in this room, including the adults who have had their moment in their life, maybe many moments in their life that has been a struggle and challenging and difficult to overcome. But what is it that enables one person to choose the left side or the right side? And so over the last few years, I've really dedicated my life I believe that I have stepped into my purpose around understanding what it means to be a human being. Just like every single one of us in this room right now. A human being. What does it mean to be a human being on this earth right now? What responsibility do I have as maybe a, a, an advanced mammal, part of the natural kingdom, animal kingdom? Maybe with just a highly sophisticated brain and, and the developed awareness that I can take into consideration maybe what the other person is feeling or thinking as empathetic beings. And it's another question I pondered for so long. What does it actually mean to be human? What does it mean? And because for so long I shut out and I numbed a lot of feelings, I took these external substances to cover up the internal pain that I was feeling. And then to turn on, to go through this process of, of healing and self-realization through a process of self-inquiry. Wow, okay. For one, we are physical, you know, I have this flesh and blood and bone, I have this this body that I can feel, human being is physical. Now, I'm intellectual, I have the capacity to sit down and write a book, which I have achieved in my life so far and I have, would love to share with you all. I have spoken with Mr. Begley, a book that is a gift for free for all of you. And I understand that you maybe don't want to be thinking about homework right now at this stage in your life. I totally acknowledge that and accept that. And this is not homework, but this is maybe a journey, an opportunity for you to reflect upon your own story. And there are some exercises within that book that allow you to, to process and write and create the future that you would like to live, that you truly desire for yourself. And so I will pass that on to Mr. Begley, who will also email that out to you. So it's inherent that we are intellectual. We are also emotional. I grew up with two beautiful sisters, and I had the privilege of relating with them on a more emotional level. 
But what I found was when I was in the environment of my sports team and around all the guys and we had all the locker room banter and we're having a good laugh and chat, there was no space. And I say that over here, but it looks like predominantly females. So I'm going to say that over here. I'll repeat that. I had two beautiful sisters, amazing sisters, one two and a half years older, two and a half years younger. Both went to Cairns High School. However, I was able to relate emotionally to my sisters. They were able to open up and express how they're feeling on an emotional based way of relating. And I was also able to tap into that way of relating with them and exploring what's going on for me and how I'm feeling in regards to what's happening in my environment. But when I was suddenly plucked out of that and found myself in sports teams around men, or boys, I should say, all we talked about, the surface level, was banter. How many girls did you get? Who did you hook up with? Yeah, yeah, and it was great. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. However, I never created space for myself in that environment to step into a deeper feeling-based way of relating. And what happened was when I was away in the United States, predominantly my circle of family and friends at that time were the guys that I played football with. And so deep down after four years of being there, not fully expressing what's coming up for me and holding on tight to all of this emotional baggage within me, left me to this broken state where suddenly it started to flood out uncontrollably through tears, through a deep, dark depression in my, in my psyche. And I struggled. I truly, really struggled. But what really pulled me through it? And it's quite an interesting one to share. But I realized that as a human being, I am also social. Meaning that just like many mammals out there, I need, I need friends family, mentors, teachers, to support me on my journey, to encourage me, to be there for me, just as I need to be there for my community and my friends and my family. I am highly social. I must interact with my society and my community and the culture that I'm immersed in. And lastly, maybe potentially that we are highly evolved potentially spiritual beings. And what does that really mean without uh, this whole attachment to religion? Maybe there is something that happens after I die. I actually have no idea. And most likely every single person in this room has no idea what happens when, when we die. But these are the deeper questions that I started to ponder when I noticed and was aware of my friends taking their life. Maybe on the other side, there is something. Maybe not. And so part of the process of the book that I have written, there is a reflective journey that you can explore some of these questions that maybe you've never even asked yourself or talked about amongst your friends. And so it's an offering to allow you to have the opportunity really to, to dive into what you're here for, what your purpose in this life is. And I will openly and honestly say, and it's a huge part of the reason that why I choose to be here today, that I believe you guys are our hope for the future. And that doesn't come lightly because as I continue to look around the world and part of my passion as I was expressing to Miss earlier is that I love the environment. I love people. I love caring for the earth. And it's at this stage in the world that all of this seems to be erupting and we could be coming to this incredibly collapsing catastrophe of mass extinction. Potentially. 
However, I truly believe that all of us have the incredible opportunity to rewrite that story. I believe that it's that you guys sitting in this room here today are going to change the world as we know it. And it's not necessarily by doing, you know, having to go down through your own deepest, darkest pit moment to propel out the other side and share your story and whatever it may be, but by simply being yourself. And, and just that, being your most fullest expression of who you are, coming from a heart-centered place, knowing that this is your intuitive gift to the world, that is enough. You don't have to do anything to impress anyone. You don't have to run off and do all of these things to gain approval from your peers or your parents. But you can do and be who you choose to be. And I can honestly say that I believe you guys are going to create a regeneration, a future that not is just sustainably just, regenerative, healing, and a future that thrives. One that creates a space for communities socially, emotionally, physically connected to each other, to ourselves, and our environment, the earth. Because it's inherently obvious to me that I am a part of this earth. I wake up and stand on it every single day, just as the earth is a part of me. So how can I take care of not just my own internal inner landscape and take responsibility for what's going on internally in my emotional feeling-based way, but how can I take responsibility for this little patch of grass that I find myself on? This environment that allows me to breathe fresh air or swim in clean oceans. And that is a huge responsibility. But if every single one of us takes action upon resolving our own inner conflicts, maybe from our own childhood, and connecting to our environment and those who care for it, then maybe just we have the incredible power in numbers to change the story. And, you know, I've been a huge part. I've been so encouraged. I don't know. Who knows about the, uh, the climate strikes at schools? Was anyone a part of it? Yeah, a couple of people. I kind of recognize a few of these. You know, I've been so encouraged by these young kids uh, and also adults who are putting on this whole big show of like screaming and shouting and waving flags and getting their posters up and, you know, changing what the p politicians are doing and with regards to their, their policies and how they care for the environment. It's amazing. And I applaud every single one of you for doing that. However, I also ponder and question what am I doing in my daily life to integrate these messages that I want to see in my politicians, that I want to see in my teachers and friends and family and, and students of you guys? These messages around connecting deeper to myself and others and the earth. How am I on a daily basis integrating these practices into my life? And the, 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 some of these things uh, may be just coming into your awareness now. Maybe these are questions and things that you've thought about through all of your life to date. I have no idea. In fact, just like I have no idea what happens after I die, I have no idea of what all of you are thinking about me right now. I have no idea what's going on in your minds the stories that are being told, what's running through you around your experiences or upbringing. And that's okay. But I can choose to be here to offer a small message, which is why I'm here today. 
and again I'll express just as I said at the beginning I am totally honored to be here privileged to speak with each of you in an opportunity that maybe empowers you to open the door to new possibilities to create a new world that you would like to live in not only a world that you would like to live in but a world that you can be alive in I love this beautiful quote and it's it's part of the book it's which I would love to show you actually this is the only printed copy that I have um, it's an electronic version and I find I love photography one of my passions is film and photography so it's full with amazing amazing photographs and little exercises and it's quite interactive and it's not just your typical reading little book but there's a quote in the book that says Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. Because what the world needs right now is people who are alive. People who are passionate. Thrilled to be here. Thrilled to share their message. Thrilled to offer their gifts. And that is my message to you today. If I had the opportunity to talk to myself in 2009 when I was sitting in that same chair as you, ready to step into schoolies and go on this wild journey of life, what would I say? I would say to be you. Be you, Shay, in your most full expression. Share openly, lovingly, compassionately. But be brave, be confident in who you are, fully acknowledge and embody everything that you choose to be. And that might have very little significance to you guys right now because I totally acknowledge that each of you are your own individual and you're going through your own life journey process right now. And that's okay. But the reason that I choose to be here and I have hope for each of you to really embark on this journey with full, full potential is that maybe there's this one little thing that catches your ears and glimpses your eyes that you take on board. Maybe it's only one person in this room. And for me, that's enough. That's enough reason to be here. That's enough reason for me to share and that's enough reason for me to encourage you to do what it is that you choose to do. It might be to be a professional pianist in Europe. It might be to play sports at a local <coughs> level in Cairns. Whatever it may be for you, go do that. But don't just do it. Do it fully. Do it wholeheartedly. Do it from a place that you are wanting to be there because you want to be there. Not because you're expecting some reward at the end, some payout or monetary returns, or because your mum and dad are telling you this is the career and the path you should take, or because you've done so well in mathematics in high school and you're getting these A grass blades and it's like, okay, well, yeah, this is like, that's not what I want to do. That's your responsibility to decide who you will become. And so to, to bring it back to this idea that we're at a marking point right now, that you guys are in a marking point in your life, what can you do right now or within the next couple of weeks to really choose what kind of life you want to live? Does anyone have any idea? Any suggestions that they would like to offer for their friends? No idea. That's okay. Maybe you're too shy to share. Because I was definitely one of those students, you know, just like kind of, even if I had something I knew it was 100% the right answer, I had this fear. And it was only a fear. 
that if I raise my hand up, even if it's not a wrong yes or no answer, there's no wrong answer here, I'm afraid of putting my hand up and then getting caught out and being shamed in front of the rest of the students. But then to fully own that shame, to own that wrong answer or that mistake in life. Because I guarantee you there will be moments that come fast and hard that will shake you up, that will challenge you, and that will be hard. But it's how you choose to respond. Do you react with more fear? Do you react with anxiety and and continue down that path? Or do you choose to respond to see it as an opportunity? An opportunity to learn the lesson and to grow from and to realize that all of these significant events that may seem out of your control are not happening to you, that you're some victim of all of this stuff that's going on around the world, but you take ownership and realize it's happening for you. This event is happening for your growth, for your own internal resolve so that life can flourish and truly thrive. Now that is a profound way to respond. And I can imagine now it's been 50 plus minutes and I have been talking a lot. And I love to talk and I could talk for another 50 minutes if you let me, but I would love to use this opportunity um, as again, open up the discussion between all of us. If all of you are a little bit shy to get your hand out there. Oh, we've got one at the back. No, they've got about 15 minutes, guys. Um, And I would love to hear from you. Um, And it can be a question. It can also come in the form of a statement. It can come in the form of a song. What I realized in my life is that I had been conformed to be obedient and follow the rules and sit down and put my hand up and when I needed to go to the toilet and as I got older, realizing that when I'm 16, 17 years old, it's no wonder that half of my boyfriends, like the guys that I was going to school with, all left to go take up apprenticeships because, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a man and suddenly I still have to ask someone to go to the toilet. I'm busting, man, I just need to go. See you later. I totally acknowledge all of that because I felt there and I've been there too. So with all of that being said, as young adults ready to graduate from high school and step into your life, into the so-called real world, out of an institution of being told from a ringing bell where you should be and how you should be acting and how you should be behaving, does anyone have anything they would like to ask or share or say at this point in time? Please raise your hand. Nothing. (laughs) Yes, at the back. Do you want to stand up? Would you like the microphone? Great question. What's your name? Jaya. Jaya. Did everyone hear a question? She said, "What is this? What you do? Is this like? Is this your?" uh, (laughs) Great question. That's really funny. Um, (laughs) So I wasn't meaning to mock you. I was just trying to put it in the you know lens of who was asking the question. I find it's great in storytelling. Yeah, so at this stage in my life, I have been really gifted with this opportunity to speak with you. I also choose to go to other schools. I've been to St. Augustine's. I've been to St. Andrew's. Um, I also speak with adults. And um, tomorrow I'm actually going to Smithfield. And so I have this glorious, glorious opportunity to to share, you know, a small snippet of my story and and get an insight into the lives of young adults and, and grown adults and it comes with great responsibility I realize so yes to answer your question in the short version yes this is something that I do and, and am passionate about and something that I love um, 
It's not always been the case. There was a period in my life where I was the shy little boy in the corner, afraid to put my hand up or speak out. Um, and so now I've slowly developed and cultivated the skills necessary to be able to offer short stories and, and encouraging messages and, and potentially inspire um, the next generation. So yes, the short story is yes. That is what I currently do. And, and th there is a message in that story as well. Um, take, for example, uh, seven, six years ago now, I was this crazy party animal boy thinking I'm top dog. My ego is just blaring through the roof, self-esteem completely out of control, thinking that I'm something I'm not. And turn it around within a few years to realize that, you know, there is a bigger meaning to my life. In fact, I have a, a bigger purpose to be here and, and choose to, to wholeheartedly step into that calling and be here presently and show up for, for myself and for the next generation. So you guys can also choose to do that with wherever you're at today. That is also within your power. And I would continue to encourage you to look into your own five-year plan, 10-year plan, 20-year plan, life plan. And not to say that it's stagnant. It will evolve and change. And your passions will change. And you will find new hobbies and, and new th friends and new things. But can continue to follow what it is that you truly, your heart is calling for what it is that you want in your life. So thanks for the question. Anyone else? Any more questions? Yes. What was your best experience when you were in a motivational uh, talk or other? What was your name? Kaylee. Kaylee. Do you want to, do you want to ask that on the microphone? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kaylee asked, for those at the back of the room, she said, what was your best experience in, in like a, a motivational, motivational speech, speech. <laughs> rather <laughs> so great question really really good question um, and I would I would suggest this moment actually this moment right now um, to be here with you guys at a school that I graduated from 10 years down the line with an opportunity to sincerely look in the eyes at every single one of you students and realize that I have been in that position. There will be more people in this position. And that it's you guys who have the majority of your life to choose how you want to be in the world. Great question. Yes. Your least favorite <laughs> 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 so the question, what was your name? Thanks, Zoe. Zoe said, who was your least favorite teacher? Um, <laughs> that, that is a great point. She says, Mr. Stopford. And um, for most people, they could probably agree with that. But I'm going to suggest that he was one of my favorite teachers. I was kind of like his, I was a, the soccer player and he was the coach. And, you know, I was always on his side. And... Yeah, we had a really nice relationship, actually, and I still, I still relate with him today. So I'm really privileged that I still have these relationships with teachers such as Jeff Mays and, and Josh Taylor, who, who wasn't my teacher back then, but, you know, he's an amazing man, and also Mr. Brian Stockford, um, who I, I still connect with. And, um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So um, I don't necessarily have a least favorite, but they would be my uh, top, top favorite teachers. I'll put it out there. <laughs> So far, we've had three incredible questions from uh, the lovely ladies. Gentlemen, anything that comes up for you in this conversation? Um, what's kick on? What's kick on? Great question. What is kick on? Okay, you might notice the t-shirt that I am wearing today. Proudly, uh, this is a local, lo local charity and organization. Get yourself a water bottle, a nice shirt. I am here representing kick on which is primarily a mental health, again, changing the narrative of the story. It's talking about mental health and well-being 
and also a suicide prevention charity based in Cairns, birthed about two years ago now, that I'm here to represent. And I uh, thank you for that question because I'd like to share on that. And I haven't done so, I kind of forgot about it, even though I'm wearing the shirt. They have an incredible collection and diverse resource set for anyone that needs it. And they fully acknowledge that as human beings, there are times in our lives that we all go through our own hardship and our own challenges. And they are there to offer support. They're there to offer tools, guidance, and also to be a connector, to connect a person to a possible organization, place, or community that could benefit them to overcome some of these adversities that many of us will experience in life. So, uh, does anyone have an iPhone on them? Can, can everyone just pull your iPhone out? If, I know it's at school, but again, this is not a school class. Um, this is not a, uh, pull it out, pull it out, everyone get your phones out. I'm not a teacher, remember, you can do this. <laughs> you're nearly graduated, you're nearly graduated. Just don't do this after, uh, after this session, all right? <laughs> Um, get it out. Anyone got Facebook or Instagram? <laughs> yeah, probably all of you. Uh, go to Kick On. Go to their page. Uh, give them all. Give them a like. Give them a big tick because they are helping to raise awareness around these topics. If you're also on Instagram and Facebook, you can find me. My name is Shay Ryan Douglas. You can be my friend. You can like my page. You can also follow me on Instagram if you choose to do so. Kick on, just like the shirt. K I C K O N. Yep, go and go and quickly like that page. You can also like my page if you like. What I would suggest is that it's a crazy, crazy world out there, and I'm trying to personally stay updated with the social realm. And and what I realise is that this kind of message, this talk, which is incredibly potent many many people should hear I feel I think it has real value in in the ears and the eyes and the hearts of young adults for the future moving forward and social media is a fantastic tool to allow organizations like kick on to allow people like me to really um, have a platform to share this message and so the way that the world seems to operate today is that unless you have over 10,000 likes, nobody even considers you. Anyone else have those uh, feelings as well? Realizations that it's kind of like this world where it's all about the likes, this instant, yay, I'm getting all the likes and all of this, yeah, well, woo. Crazy world, I know. But at the same time, what I would like to suggest that this technology that you have in your hand that I'm noticing is becoming largely a big distraction and, and can totally realize why the teachers tell you that it cannot come out is because just like a fire, just like a fire has the ability to warm a house and connect you to a great organizations like the likes and has the ability to cook food, the fire can cook you a warm nice dinner. It also has the potential to burn the whole house to the ground. So just as social media can have a benefit and supporting people and organizations, it can also be detrimental to your health. It can be a negative in consuming your total ability to connect to your friend who may be sitting right next to you, but you're stuck on your phone texting away and not even gonna look at him and say anything. And so, it's up to you to choose how you will be in the world, how you will choose this technology, how you use these tools that are currently accessible and totally available to each of you. And that is not my responsibility again, I will repeat, to tell you how to be or what to do. But it is your responsibility. And so I think we have five more minutes and potentially maybe one more question.
That was a great question from uh, the male perspective. Anyone else? Any more men out there willing to step up to, to the... How about this? Instead of a question, I would like to invite a really brave soul to come up here and share a small message to their peers, to their friends, maybe to wish them a wonderful journey, whatever it is that comes to you, to have the brave spirit to come up here and share a small message. Anyone? Yeah, everyone give a big clap. Good lad, love that. Good man, love that. Give him a big clap. Come on, give it up for him. Amazing, amazing. Good man, love that. True leader, true leader. I believe that we're all leaders. We're all leading our own lives, and that just by taking action, you can really lead your life and those around you in a really positive direction. See how he was able to influence every single one of you to cheer and clap. He led you through that journey of acknowledgement of his friends. Beautiful to witness. Absolutely incredible to see. Do we have any more leaders out there? Okay. Okay, I heard Jess. Is there a Jess out there? <laughs> Jess, if you feel to share right now, you're welcome to. If not, don't feel pressured into doing anything that you don't want. Again, guys, I would really, and I'm really encouraged by how um, bubbly and happy and bright you all seem. It must be a great relief to have all your exams done. And again, I'd really like to, to share that this is a moment in your life that is to celebrate. You guys have made it. You are stepping into a new phase in your life. You're just propelling forward with all of the gifts and all of the learnings and <sighs> no more homework. It's a good feeling. <laughs> and okay, maybe what I would like to suggest, I have one small thing that I would also like to share is that, and it's on the topic of homework a little bit. And when I was in school, I hated homework. I would rarely do it. Rarely, rarely do it. Only if I was really had to. And it's probably maybe the same for many of you. But as I've grown older, and I started asking myself the question, what is it I'm passionate about? What is my purpose? What, you know, what is it that makes me come alive? I had no idea. And then I started to realize, oh, hang on a second, I'm spending all of these hours of time in my day and these days of my week doing, researching all of this stuff from photography and permaculture and gardening. And it's like, oh, that's what I love to do. Where I'm channeling all my energy, what I'm spending all of my time looking at, researching, being with, this is what it is that makes me come alive. When I'm there on my own, got nothing else to do, what do I really feel to do in that moment that's going to best serve the world or my world? I've realized they're the things that I am passionate about, the things that I want to research. And suddenly it doesn't become, it's not homework anymore. It's suddenly enjoyable to do the research and do the studies and write the book and follow the passion. It becomes light and easy and graceful, the journey. So, what that journey looks like for you is going to be totally different to the journey that I've embarked on. Any more questions? I think the bell is probably about to ring in a couple of moments. We have the opportunity for one more brave student to say something. If that is it for today, I would like to 
lastly, thank each and every single one of you for being an incredibly amazing person here at this school. A, a huge thanks to all of the teachers. Um, also, thanks to all of the people in the tech and doing in the background. Thank you so much. You've been incredible. Give them a big round of applause. And lastly, I would like, actually, I would love for you to turn to your friend next to you and thank them. Thank them for the journey that you've been on. Wish them all the best in their lives. Give them a big high five, hug, look at their eyes, do what you feel is appropriate. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great, great life.